our second lecture on enzyme kinetics, we are going to be looking at other modes of possibilities where our enzyme substrate complex is going to be formed. In this case, what we will look at is we will look at bisubstrate reactions, random sequential ones, ordered ones, ping pong reactions, and pre-steady state kinetics in an exemption from some of the michaelis menten kinetics that we had looked at in the previous lecture. Our ternary complex tells us that we have three components in our complex formation. So if we look at enzyme catalysis with two or more substrates, the possibilities are different. In most enzymatic reactions, actually, there are at times two or more different substrate molecules that bind to the enzyme in the specific recognition that we looked at in the previous module. For example, if we look at ATP plus glucose, we have the enzyme hexokinase that works in the transfer of the phosphate group to form glucose 6-phosphate and itself forms ADP in the process. The rates of such bisubstrate reactions can also be analyzed by a michaelis menten approach. In this case, we find that there is a Michaelis constant corresponding to 0.4. The enzymatic reactions with two substrates now involve the transfer of an atom or a functional group on one substrate to another in the formation of another compound. So it may so happen that both of these substrates are bound to the enzyme concurrently, that means together, forming a non-covalent ternary complex. So there are three components present in this complex that is also an enzyme substrate complex. But in this case, instead of having one substrate, we have two such substrates. The first substrate is converted to the product and dissociates at times before the second substrate binds in a different case where there is no possibility of a ternary complex form. So what we can have is that the possibilities with two substrates indicate that we can have both substrate bound together forming a ternary complex. It may so happen that the first substrate is converted to product before the second substrate binds, so there is no ternary complex formed. We will see specific examples of the binding of two substrates to an enzyme. So the types of bisubstrate reactions that can occur are sequential reactions that involve single displacement reactions. In this case, all the substrates bind before the chemical event, that is the catalysis, can take place. We have in this case ordered sequential reactions where the two substrates have to bind in a specific order. Or we can have random sequential reactions where the substrates can bind in any order. We can have ping pong reactions that are known as double displacement reactions. And in this case, the chemistry occurs binding to all of the substrates. So there is some catalysis that occurs before the binding of the second substrate. In sequential reactions, both substrates bind to the sub enzyme, which leads to the development of the transition state complex that will then result in product formation. So we have a ternary complex form. In ordered sequential reactions, when the binding of one substrate A is definitely required before the other substrate can bind to perform the specific catalytic mechanism of the enzyme. So for, the, for example, these are examples that of such proteins that have the binding in terms of two substrates involved. When we look at random sequential reactions, the sequence of the binding of the substrates to the enzyme is not of importance. And the substrates 
Both the substrates can bind in a random fashion. In ping pong reactions, the catalytic process, as we mentioned, can proceed with binding of one of the substrates, then a release of product before the binding of the other substrate. We will look at the specific schemes of binding. These are examples that would be involved in the ping pong type of reaction, some of which we have already covered in the previous module. In a random sequential reaction, therefore, we have our enzyme. We have the possibility of two substrates binding to the enzyme to form our enzyme substrate complex. So we can have ES1 and ES2. These are the two substrates that have been bound to our enzyme. We now form the ternary complex, which is ES1, S2, because we have three components present in our complex. And this can result in a P1, P2, or it may happen if we have a reaction that forms just one product. So if it is a ligase, then we would have S1 and S2 combined to form a single product. So this indicates that the sequence of binding is not important. So if we have ES1, we can have ES2, S2 bind to form ES1, S2. Or if ES2 is formed first, we can have S1 bind to form the ternary complex. So what happens in this case is we can have S1 formed first in this case where we have S1 arriving or recognized first. We can have S2 where the complex formation will be ES1 in one case and ES2 in the other case. This would then form our ES1, ES2, convert it to the e, P1, P2, which could then result in the release of the products that could be also one product, as I mentioned, or we could have the release of P1, P2, or P2, or P1. And we realize that there is no definite order in which the substrate binds and there is no definite order in which the product is released. But the important part is we get our enzyme back as we wanted it to be ready to bind the other substrate molecules for a further reaction. If we look at the steady state kinetic analysis of the bisubstrate reactions in terms of what we had learned in the previous classes, we have a random process where we, if we plot 1 by V0, versus 1 by S2 in our double reciprocal line weaver birth plot. And we have increasing concentrations of S1 in this direction. This is a model that we get for a bisubstrate reaction. And we can find out a combination of the values of the Km for the substrate 1 and the substrate 2. We can get a slope and we can get the Vmax of the reaction from the intercept and the slope. Now, these intersecting lines here indicate the formation of a ternary complex. It is a much more complicated than the case of a single substrate bound that we had discussed in the previous lecture, where we looked at michaelis menten kinetics corresponding to single substrate reactions. If we now look at ordered sequential reactions, in this case, we have E plus S1 form our ES1 complex. In this case, after ES1 is bound, is it possible for S2 to bind in the formation of the ternary complex that will then subsequently lead to our product formation? So we have our enzyme, we have our substrate come to form our enzyme substrate 1, our ES1 complex. This then allows the formation or the entry of S2 as the second substrate, giving us the ES1, S2. So the specific order is important, unlike our random sequential set. So again, we have the product formation and we get back our enzyme.
If we look at the specific case of an ordered pi substrate reaction, we have our 1 by V0 versus 1 by S1 in a double reciprocal plot, where we look at the increasing concentration of S2, because only after S1 binds is it possible to bind S2. And we see, again, the ternary complex formation and a Km and a slope and an intercept with expressions for Km and Vmax associated with them. And the intersecting lines, again in this case, indicate the formation of a ternary complex. The intercept here changes because S1 and S2 binds to different enzyme forms. For example, when we are looking at E plus S1, we have our ES1 formation. The change in the intercept is because we have the different types of substrates bound. So in case of a random set, the slope will change because the binding of S1 and S2 is reversible. In a ping pong reaction, the case is somewhat different for a bisubstrate reaction. What happens is we have an E plus S1 form in the formation of the enzyme substrate complex. There is then a conformational change in the enzyme itself where we have an E prime of the enzyme and the product formation in the catalytic reaction, a transformed enzyme. This transform formed enzyme will then be able to bind to the next substrate in this bisubstrate reaction, giving us an E prime S2 complex, unlike the E S1 complex, which cannot bind S2. So S1 binds to E in the formation of E S1. During the catalytic reaction, the enzyme has changed conditions related to its active site or conformational changes in its formation of the E prime product complex. And then we have a transformed enzyme that then binds the second substrate. This then releases our other product and we get back our enzyme to where we started from. So in this case, we do not have a ternary complex formation because at each point in time, there is one substrate bound to the enzyme. So we have our S1 bound to the enzyme. In the ES1 formation, a transformation of the enzyme to E prime with the first product bound to it. The release of the first product is going to have our transformed enzyme, the E prime enzyme that then has to bind S2 in the formation of another enzyme substrate complex with the second substrate that is then going to be releasing the product P2, giving back our enzyme. So the differences in the random sequential reactions in the ordered sequential reactions and in the ping pong reactions are very distinct. So in the steady state kinetic analysis of the bisubstrate reaction in the ping pong case, what we see is when we plot the double reciprocal plot in terms of 1 by V0 versus 1 by S1, what we observe in is increasing S2 concentrations. Again, in this case, we have to realize that S2 will not bind to the enzyme initially. So we have to plot 1 by S1 because we have the formation of the ES1 complex first that then changes its conformation to form our E prime P1. The release of the product that is then going to give our transformed enzyme that is only then going to be able to bind our S2. So this is the sequence of events that occurs 
in a ping pong bisubstrate reaction, we can get the specific slope associated with the Km and the Vmax values in a Michaelis Menten type kinetics. And the parallel lines indicate that there is a ping pong indicating a double displacement pathway with no formation of a ternary complex. The ternary complex, as we saw in the two previous cases, would result in an intersection of the lines indicating that a ternary complex has formed. So the intercept changes because the two substrates A and B bind to the different enzyme forms. So the different enzyme forms that we see are E and E prime and the slope remains the same because the binding of S1 and S2 is irreversible due to the release of the product P. That is important. So if we look at an example now of a random case, we have the metabolism of creatine that follows a random sequential mechanism. What do we mean by this? We mean that there are two substrates involved in the enzymatic catalytic process and the two substrates can bind in any fashion. We can have substrate one bind before substrate two and vice versa. So this is our creatinine, creatine that is our starting first substrate. This is creatine kinase that is going to now transfer a phosphate group. So the transfer of the phosphate group indicates that ATP also has to bind for the reaction to proceed and we would have phosphocreatine in the formation of or rather the transfer of the phosphate group from ATP to creatine forming phosphocreatine. So in this specific reaction we have the ternary complex that is our enzyme, our ATP, and our substrate. Now, in a random form, it would mean that the creatine could bind first to creatine kinase followed by ATP, or ATP could bind first followed by creatine. But we would have the formation of the ternary complex where we would have the enzyme, our S1 or S2, depending upon which found first, and we would have the enzyme ADP and phosphocreatine in its specific reaction. In the ordered case, there would be a specific order in which the enzymes or the enzyme would bind the substrates. In this case, we are looking at the example of pyruvate, where we have the process or the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. In this case, we have NADH going to NAD+. What happens is we have pyruvate to lactate formation, our enzyme here, lactate dehydrogenase. So we have LDH, then we have NADH, so that is bound. So only after NADH binds to LD LDH can pyruvate bind. So this signifies the ordered bisubstrate reaction. In the previous case, we looked at a random set where it did not matter whether ATP bound first or creatine bound first. But in this case, for pyruvate to bind, NADH has to bind first. This will be also followed by the ternary complex and then we will have the release of the product lactate and our NAD+. So there is a distinct order in which this occurs, unlike our random set. In an example for the ping pong reaction, what did we understand from the ping pong reaction? It was a set where we had the formation of the enzyme substrate complex, the release of a product, a transformation of the enzyme that would then bind the second substrate, release the product and get back to its original form. So this is one example of a CHEA protein enzyme that 
has an interesting feature in that it is a kinase that first transfers the phosphate group of ATP onto its own histidine residue. So what happens is this histidine residue takes up the ATP first. Now what it has to do actually, it then transfers it over to an aspartic acid residue of another CATY. So this is where we have a transformation in terms of a CHEAS. So what is happening is this is our enzyme. This is our first substrate. This is our ES1. After the ES1, what happens is we have a transformed enzyme. So this transformed enzyme now has to get back to the original form. So now our transformed enzyme then has a variation where it is going to now have this phosphate transferred over to the modified enzyme. And we have this set where we have now the modified enzyme, the original one where we have the transfer being possible and a release of our product and the enzyme back to where it was in a ping pong reaction. So we can differentiate these bisubstrate mechanisms by isotope exchange. What do we mean by that? In a sequential mechanism, we can look at two substrates that are required for the isotope exchange. In a ping pong mechanism, we can have the isotope exchange is possible without S2 and here it is possible without S1 or without A and B being the two different substrates. So in a sequential mechanism, for example, in a protein like maltose phosphorylase, we have glucose, glucose, that is maltose plus phosphate. In this case, our enzyme that is going to form glucose 1-phosphate plus glucose. Isotope exchange experiments indicate that we have glucose-glucose. If we add glucose star, that is with the isotope to this, there is no isotope exchange. So maltose remains. If we have glucose 1-phosphate and we add a phosphate with an isotope, there is also no isotope exchange in a sequential mechanism. If we now look at a specific transfer where we have an isotope exchange possible, where we are looking at a glucose, glucose with the phosphate forming a glucose one phosphate with isotope exchange, that is also possible in this type of a reaction where we have a sequential reaction indicating a single displacement. However, when we look at isotope exchanges in a ping pong mechanism, for example, in sucrose phosphorylase, where we will have glucose fructose plus the phosphate and our enzyme forming our glucose 1 phosphate plus the fructose, we can now have a glucose fructose with the fructose phosphate have the transfer of the isotope in this particular reaction where there will be isotope exchange. Similarly, if we look at glucose 1-phosphate plus the phosphate, here there is going to be a isotope exchange possible that we see here. So in the ping pong mechanisms, we see that there is an isotope exchange possible because we have the binding in different manners in the ping pong mechanism that we look at. So when we look at the glucose fructose plus the enzyme, we have fructose and the glucose bound to the enzyme. Then when we have the glucose enzyme complex that is now binding the phosphate, it will form glucose 1-phosphate plus the enzyme. So in this case, we see a double displacement as opposed to the single displacement that we saw in the sequential mechanism. This follows non-Michaelis-Benton kinetics. What we mean by that 
is these different enzyme systems we realize can have their substrate bound in a manner that could change the conformation of the enzyme, change its affinity for the different substrates, and so on and so forth. They could be self-catalytic enzymes, specific cooperative types, allosteric enzymes, which we looked at in different mechanisms in our previous module. And we will be looking at cooperativity specifically in a protein-protein interaction or a special lecture where we look at myoglobin and hemoglobin binding. So we have our V0, that is the initial velocity in a typical michaelis menten kinetics curve. And what we observe is we have a saturation curve for an enzyme that shows sigmoid kinetics where unlike a curve that would bind in a manner like this, we have a different type of binding which we observe in the case of hemoglobin. We can have pre-steady state kinetics. In this case, what happens? This is concerned with the formation and the consumption of enzyme substrate intermediates, such as the ES or the E star, that is the changed enzyme, until their steady state concentrations are reached. In this case, we observe that the amount of product is suddenly formed in a very drastic manner initially, which means that there is initial what we call a burst phase in the kinetics where there is a sudden formation of the product indicating that there is a distinct biphasic curve to our kinetics associated with this. What we have here is the enzyme produces the enzyme transformed enzyme or the product very rapidly in the first few seconds and then the rate slows as the steady state is reached. So we see a lot of pi substrate kinetics. We understand how the products can form from an ordered sequential case where we can have a random sequential case, we can have an ordered sequential case, and we can have a ping pong reaction in the different types of enzyme kinetics involved. These are the references. Thank you.